Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Passive Buddies podcast. Today we are talking about launching an offer to cricket and how to make it successful. Today, as usual, I am joined with my co-host Brandon, who's going to talk about exactly what he's going through right now and also how to make it a success. Brandon, how are you? I am doing amazing, man. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Yeah, actually, we spoke before the show. Everything's breaking around me, but I'm still here and I'm still cracking. I'm still cracking on, yeah. Well, I mean, you even when the world is falling apart, you're showing up, and that's the most important thing. I appreciate that, mate. <laughs> Especially when I'm sat here with a mild headache as well. No, greatly, greatly appreciate it. But as you say, yeah, it, it, it's quite ironic, really, isn't it? Like, as you continue to push forward and grow, like, you always find that more things sort of like attack and break around you as you push forward. And as you say, it's just about like keep and going, don't stop. And, uh, and as you say, keep cracking on. Yeah, I mean, which sort of leads us to an offer, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, when things are breaking, a lot of people will give up, and it's the people that don't give up, and it's the one percent of people that don't give up and keep pushing forward that actually make it. So, yeah, but we should definitely, definitely talk up. About, I mean, we talked about creating a successful offer and what I'm going through right now. So I think that's so. I'll give you an, an example. Um, before we actually get into my what I'm going through right now is previously when I first got into the online space, uh, my first offer was actually and I was no one knew me. I was a, still a personal trainer and I was really just getting into the whole online thing. And the, my first offer was uh, just being my friend on Facebook for nine dollars a month. And it was I copied John Vaughn, I think his name is. Yes, I from, yes, I remember him, yeah. And uh, his offer was something similar to that. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I can probably do that. And uh, it, like, I think I got two or three or four sales uh, my first or second day. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was training and I was I, I looked at one of my clients and he, he was in the whole online space and he's been doing it for many, many years. And I was like, people are paying to be my friend online. This is this online stuff really works. This is insane. And so I was ecstatic because I never thought that was possible. I, I thought it was more of like kind of a joke just to like get my feet wet in the whole um, offer space and how to really kind of make a name for yourself. But what was, what was your first offer? Did you have um, an offer that you launched and it did well your first time? Or did you have an offer that kind of oh, sank to the, the wayside? absolutely horrendous mine was it, it just didn't work so i launched something called it was going to be like a, a monthly membership so something similar um and it was called entrepreneurs to success and that was going to be like a monthly thing and we do network and we do coaching and we do a bit of teaching um and literally i done my funnel took me ages to do my funnel because obviously it was my first first ever funnel got that all set up launched it ran ads and literally nothing nothing happened it truly was crickets and um, i remember looking at it going i was like so this was the thing that was going to set me free i was like what's going on why they're not working because i've seen like offline people pay for networking groups don't they like people pay to be like monthly subscriptions yeah. to be part of networking groups so i was like just just move that online i was like surely it can't be that difficult and you just jump on zoom and you meet up on zoom and all these wonderful things I had all this great thing planned and I never, ever, ever actually got to launch it um, in terms of got a sale through the door. It just didn't work. The offer wasn't good enough. The value stack, the the lead magnet, it was all just shocking. <laughs> well, I mean, and it, it probably taught you a lot, like kind of the objections that people had. It probably helped you improve your offer. And I'm sure it was the the best feedback that you could have got from which, like just starting out, right? Oh, oh yeah definitely like obviously a lot of people like will, will see it as a failure and, and to a degree obviously depending on what perspective you look at it yeah if that offer failed but what obviously you take from that offer as you say is like obviously I, I can now build a funnel 10 times quicker than what I ever could I can now write better copy I know more about headlines obviously going through that whole journey um, really did obviously teach me a hell of a lot ready to launch new offers different offers in, in obviously in the future so what happened to be your friend like 
Um, obviously, you got a couple of sales. <laughs> um, yeah. But then what happened? Um, man, I I think I just what did I? I think I got into affiliate marketing. Um, because I thought that what I was charging was, it was $9, so it was nothing. Um, and I was like, well, if I'm spending all this time uh, and being their friend on Facebook and it wasn't really worth the time, especially, and it was more of just testing the water um, because I wanted to, I saw someone was doing something that was successful. I wanted to model that. And so uh, I think, like I said, I think we got like four people um, before I kind of switched things up a little bit more. Obviously, I, I, I had them as a buyer's list from then, and we continuously be, became friends. I think I just canceled the membership because it was kind of like a, a gag at, uh, offer in a, in a way because it was more of a test in the water, but people were willing to spend the money, I guess. I don't even remember what I offered exactly. I think it was more... I, I didn't have my software at the time. I didn't have anything. I, I mean, I had like my knowledge from real estate investing, but I don't even think that was included. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty interesting. That was kind of my like first experience in making money. And I mean, sure, it was probably like eight, $28 a month. But um, is that math, right? $36 a month. But um, one, it wasn't worth my time. But two, it was the more of the ability that I knew that it was possible that people would be willing to uh, buy something from me personally online. And that was like my, how I gauged success. I did, like it was very binary. Did I make a sale? Yes. I've considered it success as my, my first time. Um, now when I launch something and I'm making uh, a couple thousand dollars a month, it's take, I, you know, it, it, that's might be a success for someone else, but it's not a success for me. So it just, you, you keep pushing the, the, the goalposts in a way to better, better yourself. So from there, um, I, like I said, in other, not like I said, but I've mentioned in other, uh, podcasts together that I've been doing, I got into affiliate marketing and then I got into software. And so we had a six, well, Saeed handles that part of the business now with super, uh, actually funny, uh, we just sold an NFT for our software. So I guess I, I'm still kind of in that part of the business, but uh, yeah, he handles that. And if you guys really want to listen to uh, our podcast that's coming up, it's really how to leverage your time and um, build a business that works for you. So definitely be on the lookout for that one. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, you definitely want to check that out because we go deeper on how I was able to leverage uh, other people's time and assets so that I can free up my own time. That's a little plug for you guys to subscribe. But um, yeah, it's just, I think to really start a list and start an offer and then launch it and make it successful, you need to build a, like a following. You need to build an email list. We've talked about this previously on other podcasts about how important your email list is because if you have enough people on your list every time you email them you could be making I mean you don't want to give offer fatigue where you're constantly pitching but uh, you definitely want to build that list because if you're only people who are on Facebook and you're not building a list you're not going to be able to reach those other touch points and you're not going to be able to really make any kind of sales. I, I've been able, like, re, and I'll talk about this in, in a moment here, but recently um, we launched a new offer for an inner circle for crypto. And uh, if I didn't have my email list um, and all the people, I mean, I rarely talk to anybody on Facebook, but being able to launch to an email list has allowed me to really start adding people to my inner circle. Um, what, what other offers have you had? I mean, you've had quite a bit, which ones do you feel have been your most successful and what have you, what has made them so successful? So, okay. The difference between like ETS, which was the, the first one, like obviously it was the first baby and obviously like it, 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 I didn't make a sale, which is fine. So obviously everything that was learned after that, um, the difference has always been the, the more I've been seen as an authority as the journey's gone. It's always made things ten times, ten times easier. 
Um, like obviously, so it's been a case of like growing that authority over that period of time, and that's come in different forms. Um, associated like this is this is actually my second podcast. Um, and obviously I, I've done a podcast for a year, obviously around marketing, um, and that was obviously quite fun, and obviously that kept going, and obviously that helped like grew the authority. Um, going in and coaching other people's groups, obviously it's attracted that the YouTube channel, this podcast, like everything you can do to grow that authority and just generally be a genuine person out there. But obviously, yeah, you do have your own offers. Has has grown to make it more and more successful. That can it's that consistency, isn't it? Because yeah. if you can last, if, if you can last, and it sounds daft, more than four months. You probably already beaten like ninety percent of the markets out there, and it's just about like keeping keeping keep going um, and growing growing that authority. Like people come to me asking for question asking questions and stuff like that, and it's just because actually I've been around for such a long time now. Now that obviously when you get start it sounds like oh well the other have to wait so long to get a sale. No, you don't. Um, it's just how you speed up that authority building. Like if you can go get yourself on as a guest on a load of podcasts, that's really, really going to help. And if you can start a YouTube channel, that is 100% my favorite way of building authority. Um, and it's actually, it's not just a double-edged sword. It's like a triple-edged sword for income of the YouTube channel. So actually that, that's actually a massive one. Um, and just having that platform to go and continually give that value like even if it's over a short period of time, a long period of time, we'll we'll always come back and, and feed you later. I definitely agree, and I think that see, it's so funny because people will quit after four months, but they'll spend eighteen years in school to work, you know, forty years of their lives. When for, in, I mean, in retrospect, forty four months is a very short time. And it, I mean, we're already on Wednesday of this week, and I feel like it's been an hour. Um, and it, the time just flies so quickly, especially as you get older, man. Like the time flies through the day so quick. But I think that just like you said, having that authority, having that that place, that platform that you can really go not go down on, but go hard on in the paint on, uh, where you're. Focused on either way, choice wasn't helpful. <laughs> yeah, pro- providing uh, value to you really allows you to start building an audience. Because uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched um, Catch Me If You Can, but uh, it's about a kind of a I would say con artist maybe who pretended to be all these different things from a professor to a flight attendant, not a flight attendant to a pilot, I think, and he was able to be like one step ahead of what he was teaching. So like when he was a professor, I think he had to teach like physics and he was reading like the book before the day, like the day before and then teaching about it. And people love that. I mean, you don't need to be a thousand steps ahead of anyone. You just need to be a few steps where you can help guide them to be where you are. And I think that's also why it's important to have mentors and people that are kind of in the same area that you are in your life. You should have someone who's one step ahead of you, someone who's two steps ahead of you, and then two people that are kind of in the uh, the fields with you and kind of grinding with you. One, it helps you all stay accountable in uh, those difficult times when your computer blows up and your oven uh, short circuits or whatever uh, you went through this week. And then, you know, having those other people that can guide you or teach you a few things along the way. And I think that's super important to uh, get moving. But as far as getting back to launching a successful offer, I think it really comes down to what you said in the very beginning is having a, a amazing offer. Because if you don't have an amazing offer where people are like, I'm dumb for not buying this thing, um, then it's, it's pretty much going, it's not going to flop, but it's not going to be as good as it could be. Yeah. And I think actually, especially when you're launching your first offer, you have to be prepared to, to go where others won't. You have to be prepared to go and bend over backwards because it is a competitive space. Like 
like every other business model, like everything out there, it's competitive out there. Um, so you have to be prepared to go and give more than what like the other person does for the same price or whatever. You have to go above and beyond to truly help this person and make it sh- like when they look at that offer, you go, damn, I was like, I, I just can't say no. Um, like, for instance, I seen one that came out the other day from an offer. Now, these guys obviously have grown over a longer period of time, but they they actually put a guarantee with their offer that if you, their guarantee is they will help you make, I think it was 30 grand in 90 days with your Facebook group. And I was like, I was like, you don't often see that. So it'll be interesting to see the actual guarantee behind it and obviously what you well, would it was- qualify for the guarantee. But I was like, 30, damn. 30 grand for 90 days. 90 days from your Facebook group. I was like, I was like, that yeah. is an offer. That like because they put that like guarantee behind it. Now I don't know what the how solid the guarantee is. Um, but that like you just don't see that type of thing, do you, in terms of your guarantees? Um, just to obviously solidify that like irresistible offer. So I was like, do you know what? I was like, that stood out. I was like, fair play. I was like, impressive. And it's going that, it's that type of thing. Like, I'm not saying guarantee everything because obviously you'll be pretty screwed, won't you? In, in, if you don't hit those guarantees for people, but going out there and putting your neck on the line and obviously really going to, to help these people will stand out and it will help you get sales and it will help you get obviously people across the line. Yeah, definitely. I, actually, it's funny because I, I got that same offer. Um, wow. I, I, so I thought it was... Uh, I think the person, I don't know, um, I don't remember the guy's name, but I asked him for some information and he, cause it, like you said, it was a great offer and he didn't respond. So I think he was a uh, appointment setter, I'm guessing. Um, but he had his own like video sales page and everything. So I, I don't know. Um, but when I asked for more information, he just, uh, cut me off. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember one of my buddies and he was talking about how he had this offer and he pretty much was like, I don't know how I'm going to fulfill all of this. I'm giving away everything, like I'm giving away my time. I'm giving away like, like cheat sheets. I think he was in fitness, but he was giving away cheat sheets. He was giving away like meal plans, uh, personal one-on-one training, you know, pretty much giving away the farm. And I asked him like, Hey man, like, have you, have you sold anything yet? And he goes, well, no, but, uh, you know, I have, I don't know how I'm going to fulfill all this when, you know, when I, it's going to take too much time. And uh, I was like, well, you haven't sold anything. So like, you should probably start selling something before you can actually worry about fulfillment. I think a lot of people worry about what could happen versus focusing on what they could do today. And I think that if you can make a few sales, you can really see what sticks, what doesn't, and then cut your offer down because there might be something where say a a meal plan, which I think is super important being in fitness, but say that's not as important to your customer. You can start taking that off and slimming down your offer so that one, you're getting market research about your offer. And that's, and we'll go over what I'm doing now about my offer, but, um, once you can slim that offer down and make it where it's, it is sustainable and it is providing value, it kind of gives you a roadmap on what people want. And then you can take what people's objections are and their, uh, like their roadblocks and you can use that in your copy and really make a even more compelling offer for future, uh, I guess, students or future, uh, purchasers or buyers of your product. And so um, have you noticed that a lot of people start, I guess, putting roadblocks up on fulfillment or whatever they're trying to do before they even like launch anything? Mindset is a, is a very valuable thing. And, and that is, is huge. Like people, like all you need to worry about is the offer that you're about to launch. Can you get them the result? If the answer is yes, don't worry about anything else. If you can give them the result that obviously you're promising them for that price, don't worry about anything else because the mindset about delivery affects sales in so, so many ways. Um, even to the point of like, I remember back in the agency when we were at like, when we were at full capacity, um, 
my sales guy couldn't close, even though the leads were good, because mentally he knew we were going to struggle. So that affected his game and that affected it. So even though like his sales calls were the same, the leads were the same, everything about it, but he knew in the back of his head, if he, if he closed one more client, I was like, the potential obviously of the team would struggle. And he knew that would then cause a conflict. So having that really does affect, like, do not worry about anything else apart from that sale. Like, if you're going to go and get, go after that sale, go after it full force and believe absolutely 100% you can deliver. Once you've got that sale, right, okay, now you can send your attention to that fulfillment if you need to go get extra staff, if you need to go get software, if you need to go and get extra things to go and deliver, fine. But unless you go and close that sale, you're never going to have to worry about the fulfillment because it doesn't matter. It's just taking up mental capacity that you don't need right now because you haven't sold the thing. Yeah, I think that's, if, if you go back to what you said about your sales guy, um, I think that's a huge, a huge driver in your offer is just having conviction in your offer. If you don't feel that it's going to help someone or it's not good enough, or you just don't believe in it, a lot of that's just going to show to your target audience or your, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, your prospect. And they're going to see that, that you have, you don't have conviction in it. So they're not going to have it in conviction in your offer and in you, because it's going to show how you, just by your mannerisms, how you speak of the offer and your tonality and all of that tonality, all of that is going to show up on why it, it's not going to do well. And so to kind of go back, I'll give you a perfect example. We're launching a crypto offer where it's an inner circle. And um, I've never had an inner circle before. And so I didn't know how to price it or anything. And so I put a few offers out there, saw what's stuck, see what people were like worried about, like, was it the price? Was it not a better, best, better offer? Is there something else in the market like that? Um, am I targeting people that can afford that offer? So you start doing market research um, before you even kind of launch the offer. I never even create a sales page or anything like that. I just talked to, I launched it on my Facebook group or my email or DMs and see what people like, don't like, if they uh, vote with their money, then I know then that was a pretty good offer. And if they don't, then I obviously have to change some things or have to fix my wording or uh, see what kind of objections that people are having. And then once I, and then we talked about this in our previous uh, podcast about starting your online course with market research. That's, I mean, I'm following the same uh, formula. And so from there, I'll, I'll pretty much um, take everyone's kind of testimonials, their uh, roadblocks, and I'll turn that into the, the main offer. And then I can make that into an actual um, like sales copy for my funnel. And then you can start running ads to it. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much doing market research, seeing what people want, um, asking, I think, I think there's a, I don't know if it's a book or something, but, or a quote, but it's pretty much ask people what they want and then give it to them. And that's pretty much pretty easy. Um, and that's how I've always ran my offers. Yeah. I think obviously like that, that feedback loop is critical, isn't it? Like if you, if you do want to make a, a successful offer, you need to be talking to people prior to launching an offer. You need to see what they need. You need to be growing that consistent following and have that like back in behind you. Not in terms of like obviously people who have purchased before. Like you can go and sell to a complete audience that have never purchased from you before. But if they see the value in you, if you've gone and took time to get to know them, I know in some um, in someone's course that I've been through, and um, part of their thing is like you have to take fifty calls, like market research calls, before you even launch your offer. So you get to obviously like go out to your audience, speak to people, like take all these notes down. And then from all those problems, can you create solutions? If you can, can you teach that solution? And then that's what goes into your course. So the heavy focus is on that. Talk to people, find out what they need, and then go and build a solution. Yeah, and I think that's the, the easiest way to do it because 
if you're asking people what they want and you give it to them, they're kind of already committed because they already said that if they have this, then I will join and you create this. And now they're, then it's kind of like, well, now you're going back on your word if you don't buy it, because I've, I've presented something that you said you wanted. Um, not that you're going to, I mean, if they say no, obviously you're not going to throw it really? in their face <laughs> because um, that'd be, it'd be just a bad sport of things. And you just don't, I mean, things change. Like it's, people's situations change where they could potentially need that today, but maybe they already found the solution. So who knows? But I think that if you can start building your audience, uh, do market research and give value uh, more than you ask for uh, things in return, then people are going to reciprocate, reciprocate, however you say that, uh, to you and buy what you have to offer, if, if it makes sense for them. Well, when you circle back to obviously the first offer I launched, uh, the ETS membership group, uh, I didn't speak to anybody, didn't speak to actually, I just took an, an offline scenario and put it online. I didn't speak to anyone. I didn't do any market research. I went, well, if you just add this, this, and this, and then obviously if people buy it there, then they'll buy it here. And obviously it completely bombed because I didn't speak to and I didn't see if anyone's even interested in something like that. And it absolutely killed the launch. Like you'll be surprised. Like if you see Instagram stories and Instagram polls and Facebook polls and they're asking questions about, do you like this or that? Do you like this or that? Like guaranteed they're ready to either put a micro offer a masterclass or a course and they're about to launch it to you because they're getting that feedback from you. And that's not to say that like, I remember seeing a Facebook post ages like if you're asking questions like to your target audience, you don't know what they need. Well, sometimes situations change and sometimes the perception of what they need changes. So you have to actually continue to always go back. Like I got an email from like Russell the other day, obviously not players in the game, like but his marketing team. And they were they were sending out a survey again for something else. And um, obviously it's probably to get that feedback and launch another micro offer. Um, so even at that level, it still happens. Like, don't be scared to go and ask what is it you want in order to be able to create it into a successful product for these guys. Yeah, and I'm we're gonna end with this, but I I mean I'm I just sent out an email yesterday to everyone who bought our nine dollar uh, what is it called a lead magnet, and I asked for their feedback. I said, you know, what did you like? What did you not like? Uh, how can I change it? And everyone said uh, it was amazing. And so I just, and what you can do if they say it's amazing, I just took screenshots of it and posted it on our, um, uh, what is it? Our sales page, not our sales page, but our, um, our cart page and use those as testimonials. So one, it, it allows you to get feedback and changes in your program, but also if they do say good things, as they should, then you can use that as testimonials. So it's just a, a good way to always ask for feedback. Absolutely love that. And do you know what I mean? What a way to finish. No, even taking that feedback and putting it onto sales pages and all that good stuff. Every time you've had a good conversation where you've helped someone out, like get that feedback, get it in some form because you can use that in testimonials all day long. And I absolutely love that, mate. What a way to end um, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Hope you found it valuable. If you are about to launch something, good luck. I hope it goes well. And I will see you on the next episode. Peace.